I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be guilty of judgment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When King David was fleeing from his son Absalom, who was trying to take over his throne, a certain man came up to him and started to curse the king and threw stones at him and his servants. This man was a relative of the former king, King Saul, who David had defeated. This man was making fun of David, saying that he was getting what he deserved for taking the throne from Saul. Of course, this was not true. David was the rightful king. Saul had disobeyed the Lord and his prophets, and therefore was replaced by King David. King David's soldiers were annoyed at this relative of Saul who was making fun of their king, so they told the king that they would go and slay him. But David said, No, let him be, for perhaps the Lord may look upon my affliction, and the Lord may render me good for the cursing of this day. What an amazing show of meekness. Here was King David, the most powerful man in the world at that time fleeing from his son in order to hopefully save his son's life. And along the way, he is derided by a lowly slave, but nevertheless, he lets him live. The gospel we have just read follows along these same lines of meekness and contains instruction for us. Among other things, it treats of anger and its bad effects and tells us the means of avoiding it. We must remember, first of all, that we are neither Jew nor heathen, but we are Christians, who must in all things be led by the law of charity. The gospel teaches us that not only actual murder, but even the desire to kill someone is sinful and punishable. That even one who is angry with his brother is deserving of a severe punishment. For in these things, as in so many others, Christian charity must be more perfect than that of the Pharisees, whose righteousness was only on the surface. They made only a show of holiness and did not strive to have it in their heart. It is not necessary for me to tell you what anger is, and how much harm it produces, for only too frequently we allow ourselves to be overcome by it, and for the most trivial reasons. We only repent of our rashness often when it is too late, and when we cannot repair the damage done. Anger blinds us, as so many people have unfortunately experienced. It dims our reason and makes us like an animal. It disturbs the peace of the home and also the peace between neighbors and friends. Furthermore, a bad temper undermines the health of those who give in to it and it makes them an object of aversion to their fellow men. It also sometimes happens that the person in his rage injures himself, discovering that he cannot hurt the object of his wrath. We see this very often in children and sometimes in animals. A dog, for example, if it cannot bite the person who threw the stone at it, will attack the stone until it hurts its teeth. By our anger, we usually injure ourselves more than we injure others. In our argu arguments, we say many things that cause us trouble or, at the very least, we regret later. What must we do to master our anger? St. Paul answers, Revenge not yourselves, my dearly beloved, but give place to wrath. Which means, if anyone offends you, do not take revenge, but leave vengeance to God, who alone has the right to exercise it. Give place to your wrath, and let it cool off. The longer the time between the offense and the reaction, the more likely you will be able to control yourself in your response. For this reason, a heathen philosopher once advised 
the Roman Emperor Augustus, who was very easily angered, that he should neither speak nor act when angry until he had repeated the 24 letters of the Greek alphabet slowly and distinctly. We can use this advice ourselves. I wouldn't recommend saying the Greek alphabet, but you could say a prayer, the Our Father or the Hail Mary, for example, and this, in this way, our anger will be calmed and we will not be led into saying injurious words or committing rash deeds. Plus, we will be spending some time in prayer, which is always a good idea. To give a place to anger until it cools down is the best means of mastering our wrath and avoiding sin. This is what the Savior did, as it says in the epistle of St. Peter, who, when he was reviled, did not revile, when he suffered, threatened not. Another means of mastering our anger and guarding against the evils which, lead, uh, which it leads us to is given to us by the Holy Ghost when he says in the book of Ecclesiasticus, If thou blow the spark, it shall burn as a fire, but if thou spit on it, it shall be quenched, both of these come out of the mouth. From which we understand that if anyone, inflamed with the fire of anger, utters the strong words against you, and you return these words with similar words, the fire of anger will blaze up fiercely between you, so that it will be hardly possible to extinguish it. But if, on the contrary, you make use of kind and soothing words toward him, his anger will be appeased, and his wrath will be spent. For a mild answer breaks wrath, says King Solomon, but a harsh word stirs up fury. How many quarrels and fights, how many slanders might have been prevented if we would follow this beautiful advice and give a mild answer to unkind speech. King Saul moved by the evil spirit, wished to kill his faithful servant, David. But when he found him playing softly on the harp, he was unable to carry into effect his determination, and the evil spirit went out of him. And so will the evil spirit, the spirit of anger and re revenge, depart if we return meek words of charity to our fellow men when they, in anger, use hard words towards us. The fire of anger will be quenched within them and will not be enkindled in us either. Let us for the future strive to restrain our anger and acquire true Christian meekness. To this end, let us accustom ourselves at every sudden rising of temper, neither to speak nor act until we have considered for a few moments what is befitting for us to do as Christians. And when we speak, let it be gentle and with charity. We live in an angry world these days. This is primarily due to selfishness, especially between spouses, but also because of the music people listen to, the movies they watch. Obviously, these things have come about because of a lack of true Christian society. If we don't want this anger, the anger of the world, to creep into our own lives, then we must practice true Christian virtue. As St. Peter says in the epistle today, let us turn away from evil and do good. Let us seek after peace and pursue it. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.